All right. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to give you a brief uh, description about how to complete step nine here. Notice that in step nine, there are um, several formulas here that you need to be able to include. Now, the details of how to use these formulas and what they mean will um, be covered in more of your lectures. But let me show you how to apply these in um, in the Excel uh, document. So first of all, let's go back to our Excel document. And one of the things that um, you will need to be able to um, excuse me, calculate is descriptive statistics specifically on the price, sold, unit costs, and then all of the totals as well. Also, there's a notation that's required for you to be able to include uh, anything that you might use to edit. So there is some notes here and some examples that you have here in step 10, but I'm going to focus on step 9. Now what I'm going to do is going to be what I call um, uh, I guess uh, looking at ways of getting to the to the end of what I want um, but I will probably include some new and different things that I will delete later. So follow me and this will make sense. So I'm going to have, I have to create a new tab according to my instructions. This will be called descriptives. And this is going to be my second item. And of course, I want to have descriptives. Now, descriptives are an important part of data analysis, and they are usually the mean or the average, uh, the median, uh, the standard uh, deviation the min, the max, the range, the count, and the sum. Now I just did that by memory. Let me make sure that I have everything. Mean, median, standard deviation, min, mat, max, range, count, and sum. Now there are some other descriptives people will normally have. I've decided to just include these for this assignment. Um, there are other statistics that you may be more interested in if you're looking at other data sets. Now also in my example, I need price sold, unit cost, total sales, total costs, and total profits. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the header of everything all the way to total profits. Copy, come to my descriptives, I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to adjust the width of everything to, um, let's just say 10, so we can see most of those headers. Now, looks like a few of those are kind of broken off a little bit. So uh, there's a reason I did this, and you're gonna see a method to my madness here. Um, I have to put a formula in for each one of these, but what I wanna do is I only wanna enter the formula one time, and then for the rest of it, I just wanna copy and paste my formulas over. So for the mean, the mean is nothing more than the average, and I want the average of the price, and the average of the price is found in my data transactions, and it's in column F. So I just select on the header column F. You notice here I have average, and then I have data transactions column F, and I hit enter, and that's my average. Median is nothing more than the formula median and again that would be for column F. Now if you notice um, let's go ahead and hit enter and I am going to show you the formulas. Here you can see that I am going to continue to look at the average to apply a different formula for the column that's labeled data transactions F. So what I'm going to do is select this inside the uh, formula bar. This only works when you select it inside the formula bar. I am going to copy it and now I'm going to hit escape. It's in my clipboard. I'm going to finish with my formulas but watch this. 
I need to put standard deviation. You're going to use for this course standard deviation of a sample. We'll talk about the difference between sample or population. So that's standard deviation.s. And I'm going to hit paste. And you notice when I pasted or hit control V, my column F is there. I'm going to hit equal min, paste, my column F is there. Equals max, paste, my column F is there. Range is a formula, by the way, not a function. Range is the max minus the min. Count is equal to count, column F. Sum is equal to the sum, column F. You see how I did that, and I did it rather fast. All I had to do is know my formulas. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this back. Let's make sure things are formatted correctly. I want my standard deviation to show. I like to have three decimal places, but please follow the instructions. Um, and the same thing with count. I like that to be an integer, but I like to have the comma in there as well. So one of the things that I can do is if I take these formulas and I click and drag them to the right, what you're going to see is you'll see some errors. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to tell you right now is that if you see these hash marks, the reason why you see those hash marks is because your columns are not wide enough. I double click and you can see there are some interesting values. But if you notice that I have here my date and store name values, and these are not things that I want. But the things that I do want are these three columns and these three columns. So what I'm going to do, but by, or excuse me, I'm, let me back up a little bit. By using the technique of taking what I already created, pasting them over, I was able to take advantage of Excel's um, relative referencing to be able to copy my formulas. One of the things about Microsoft Excel that you need to capture the power of is knowing how to use your absolute and relative referencing. All right. One thing I do not like, I notice that sum is a very large number. I want to cut back these decimal places to just zero decimal places. Um, I am going to leave everything else as it is, but now I am going to delete my columns with date and store name. So now I can see, I'm going to do column width of 11 just for grins. That is a decision you have to make. And now I can see that I have my descriptive statistics here. It's up to you to be able to format this according to the example that was given. Where is the example? Here it is. So you notice that there are some differences. I have um, uh, the headers outlined appropriately and some other things. Now you notice that the count here I want to show up says this is the data set that I used. Everything says 3000 except for the unit sold and there's a reason for that and that's something for you to find in your instructions. So that is as far as I'm going to go with project one. I believe the rest of it based on the training that you received you should be able to finish it or you should be able to read the remaining part of the instructions and get through it. As always if you have questions feel free to email myself. I can set up a small Zoom teleconference with you. Or if I'm not your instructor but someone else is, please be sure to reach out to your instructor.